What's going on, Kings fans? It's your boy Jonathan Bradley here, and I am joined today by none other than Mr. Fourth Quarter himself, Sir Clutch, <laughs> a.k.a. him, De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Appreciate you. I yeah, appreciate you, man. Thanks for joining us. You just earned your first All-Star nod this season, uh, helped this team to the highest offensive rating in NBA history, potential All-NBA, Clutch Player of the Year award. What has the season meant to you? Uh, it's meant a lot. Um, really just proven proven that we belong, proven uh, that we're able to win at a high level in this league. And obviously, you know, you want to continue to you want to continue to do that. And the most important thing is just adding cons uh, consistency to it. What are some of the moments that have stuck out as the high points of the season for you? Um, I would definitely say our first, I think, seven game win streak. Um, obviously, starting the season 0-4, uh, we were still a new team trying to gel together. So uh, once we do that, once we did that, I, I feel like we were kind of on a high throughout the season. Um, I think we might have had a three game losing streak here and there, but uh, for the most part, I felt like we, uh, we played extremely well throughout the season. And I think for a lot of fans, you know, when you ask them about high points, they think about that shot in Chicago, you know, and not only the shot, but you know, you afterwards turn into the bench and saying, <laughs> I'm effing nice, you know. What do you remember about that moment and the celebration that followed? Yeah, I mean, that game probably shouldn't have been as close as it was. Uh, we didn't play well in the first half at all. Uh, and we had a lead in the fourth quarter and they came back, but um, just walking the ball of the court after DeMar hit, hit the free throw to tie the game, I was like, oh, if they don't double me, like I'm getting, to a, I'm getting to this spot and I already knew what type of shot I was shooting. So, um, I mean, those are just things that you work on. Um, and those are, that's everybody's dream to pretty much hit game winners in the NBA. And um, I don't wanna make it seem like it's not hard, but uh, when you've worked for it and I feel like I've been put in, in, in great positions uh, to succeed. So uh, like I always say, the least I could do is go out there and have confidence in myself. Love that. And we've seen you do it and Kings fans as well, time and time again this season, you know, hit big buckets down the stretch, lead this team to victory. What is it about those moments that sort of activates you as a player? I don't know, man. I, I truly tell people, because I've struggled throughout three quarters, and I'm like, well, I'm taking the same shots, but now they're just going in for some reason. Uh, I don't know, I just try to shoot every shot with confidence. Um, and I say, you, you, can't afraid, you can't be afraid to fail at the, at the end of the day. Uh, especially in close games, down, uh, down to the wire games, you can't be afraid to fail because now, you know, you're hesitating or you're not shooting a shot that you probably should have taken. Um, so just go, you, you have to be extremely confident and, and be okay uh, with failing to, to take big shots. And, you know, just moving on to the postseason, you know, you and your, your longtime friend Malik, uh, you two put up two of the best postseason debuts in, in NBA history. What do you think that you bring out of him as a player? And conversely, what do you think that he brings out of you? I think we, we know what each other can do. We know, um, we know our limits, we know our skill sets. So uh, whenever we're out there on the floor together, um, I wouldn't say we like defer to each other, but we know when the other person has it going. Um, we, we look at matchups to see which one of us should be, you know, bringing the ball up or going into more pick and rolls or, or DHOs. Uh, so we just have a feel for the game with each other, and it's, it's honestly something that you really can't put in words. It's just when you're out there, you feel how it's going. So um, that, that's, that's what happens when we're out there on the court together. It's, it's a lot of just knowing where each other are and, and knowing the flow of the game and, and how each other feel at the time. Nice. And speaking of your teammates, can you talk a little bit about Domas, you know, and how he's helped bring the best out of you and the team this season? Yeah, man. Uh, it's not many, not many bigs have the skill set that he has to so just grab the ball to grab a rebound or even after a made basket, we can inbound him the ball. Not, not many teams are doing that. And um, the way that he's able to screen for us, he gets people open, even when he's not having a good game, necessarily offensively, we're putting the ball in the basket. Um, he's still able to get me open, get Kev open, get, uh, get Davion or um, Key, get Malik. He's able to get everybody open. So it's never, we never try to judge his game off of if he's scoring 25 points or not. It doesn't. He, he affects the game in so many more in, in, in so many ways other than just putting the ball in the basket. And we've seen him kind of like take Keegan under his wing a little bit this season. And Keegan said that he's kind of a big brother to him. What does it mean? or What kind of impact does that have on a rookie to have a guy of that stature, an, an NBA all-star, kind of help guide you through your rookie season that's going to have ups and downs? Uh, it's big. I mean, Domas has been through it. He's, he's been there, done that. Like I said, multiple time all-star, should be all NBA this year. Um, coming in as a young guy who, you know, hasn't been through anything in the NBA, you know, and even 
even vets struggle at times. Um, so definitely being a rookie, you know you're going to hit um, adversity. You're going to hit adversity throughout a season. Um, coming from college, you could play up to 40 games, and that's not even half of an NBA season, plus the playoffs now. So having somebody like that in your corner, who basically you're seeing every day, uh, can just try to give you cheat codes throughout a, throughout a season. What have you learned about yourself and your team so far this postseason? Uh, I think that since the game's gotten a lot more physical, uh, I think guys have have met the match. I think guys have have stepped up to the occasion. Right, so after the game one win, you know, of course, a historic moment in Kings history, you lift the beam with Vivek, someone who has spoken glowingly about you not only as a player but as a person. You mentioned that he has no problems giving you the keys to the franchise. Uh, you know, what was that moment like when you guys squashed that purple button? <laughs> and what does his support mean to you? Oh, man, it's great. Vivek is, is such a great human. Um, you know, I've been able to develop a relationship with him off the court. So uh, just getting to know him. Uh, I mean, he wants the best for this team, for the city. And uh, I mean, he's he, he hired guys who have done a great job, an excellent job of putting a team together, put, putting a roster together, also putting a coaching staff together. Uh, just from top to bottom, I feel like, um, you know, he wants this to be, you know, as close to perfect as, you know, you'll never be perfect, but as close to perfect as we possibly can. And, uh, and I'm just happy that the world got to, the world got to experience what it was like uh, being inside Golden One. Talk a little bit about the impact that Mike Brown has had on this team. Oh, I mean, it was a, it was a total 180. Uh, from the day he got here, he's accountability, you know, hold everybody accountable. Um, from me and Domas to every single person down the line. So um, with us being you know, willing to coach, willing to be coached, um, he's like, then that means, that means everybody else should be able to take any type of criticism if you get pulled, if this or that. Um, if this or that happens, then you should be okay with it because I do it to my best player. So um, he's, been, he's been great for us and I think he got everybody to buy in since day one. Uh, like we signed a contract at the beginning of the year, not a, not an NBA contract, but a contract like promising things to each other. And I think everybody has fulfilled that and even more. So uh, we want to try to keep this thing going as long as possible. And what about the leadership of guys like Monty McNair and really the whole front office? Like, what are your thoughts on how they've constructed this roster? Uh, they did a great job. Um, obviously, with the, with the moves that happened this summer, uh, people were asking me, like, when did I think that we'd be good? And I was like, as soon as we got Kev, Malik, and we drafted Keegan, like, this is an entirely different team. Obviously, we got Domas at the deadline last year, but at the end of the day, you still have to build a roster around, you know, your best guys. And I think they did a great job with that, with, with the link that we got, with the athleticism that we got, with the shooting that we got. And I think all it took for us was to jail together. And um, I feel like we're probably playing the best brand of basketball that we've played all year. Uh, we're still able to put the ball in the basket, obviously, and we haven't shot the ball well yet, but um, I just feel like there's another level that we could reach. And for you personally, what kind of statement are you trying to make this postseason? Um, honestly, I wouldn't even say I'm, I'm trying to make a statement. Uh, I want to prove to myself that, you know, I'm able to come into these big games and be able to affect the game. Uh, and I want, I would say I want everybody to just see what it's like to watch the Kings play. Um, you know, most of the people my age, around my age have never seen the Kings in the postseason. Probably, most of them probably never watched the Kings game, to be honest. So um, just allowing people to experience that and allowing the Kings fans to experience what they're experiencing now, I think is a big thing for me this postseason. You mentioned, you know, fans not being able to really see the Kings play this season. I want to dive into that a little bit more. You know, this team played on national TV twice this season before. Against two, the two New York teams. Yeah, yeah right. This one <laughs> so, you know, the broader NBA audience is really just now coming around to seeing this team play. So what's the one thing that you want, you know, people who are late to the party, who are just, you know, tuning in to know about the Beam team? Uh, I mean, everybody knows that we had the best offensive rating in history. We led the league in scoring, uh, but it's a lot of substance to what we do. Obviously, we play fast, uh, we play fun, we play loose, um, but knowing that we could also you know, get get it done in a, in a in a close knit game. I think I don't know what our clutch rating was or whatever it was, but we throughout the season we were able to get big stops. Uh, we were able to make big baskets. So uh, just know that there's a lot of substance in what we're doing. All right, so that's all I got for you, De'Aaron. I appreciate you taking the time today. I'm sure Kings fans do. Uh, we're wishing you much luck throughout the rest of the postseason. And uh, you know, for De'Aaron Fox, 
I'm Jonathan Bradley signing off. Go Kings and light the beam. Yep, go Kings.